Welcome to Retrobot, the YouTube channel where we feed a friendly space robot a diet of pure nostalgia. I'm Clay, and this is a Short Circuits video. Shorter formats for your retro viewing needs. Today we're talking about Studio Series Grimlock and Wheelie, so let's jump right in. You can see here that we've got Studio Series Grimlock and Wheelie in the box. They have been out of the box, but I wanted to show you what it's like in the packaging, which right now, if you go to a Walmart, uh, at least around here, you can find tons of these. Uh, the artwork is very nice. Uh, the packaging is decent. Nothing really all that extraordinary about it. Uh, legal mumbo jumbo on the bottom, and of course, product shots on the back highlighting the Grimlock figure in both modes and the wheelie add-on figure. This figure has been touted as, uh, as maybe the alternative if you didn't get a masterpiece Grimlock. And uh, let's see if that's accurate. So I'm gonna take him out of the box here and we can just slide the tray out and it has a little plastic cover which goes over the chest. And then Grimlock comes out here, and he has his blaster, which he can hold. And the, le the little wheelie figure, which is uh, probably the most notable addition to this toy, as opposed to other Grimlock toys. Let's take the packaging out of the way for the moment. And we can focus in on Grimlock and Wheelie in all their splendor. The Wheelie figure does have more points of articulation than I expected. Uh, it has a ball joint at the head, it has ball joints at the shoulders, it has a waist pivot, and ball points or ball joints at the hips, but it does not have elbow joints or knee joints. And that makes this figure very, very limited. Uh, it's one of those things where I kind of expected it to be, uh, be more of a little statue, uh, not really have even this much articulation, but because they went to the trouble of giving it all of these little points of articulation, it's, it's curious as to why they wouldn't just go ahead and give him elbows and knees, because at that point, this becomes a completely playable figure. Whereas the way it is now, uh, there's not really a lot that you can do with him other than pose him on Grimlock. He has a peg in his leg, which allows him to sit on Grimlock's shoulder here which if we can get that in there, there we go. Whoops, almost. It doesn't sit well on his shoulder, but there, there we go. So you can pose him on Grimlock's shoulder, which is apparently very important. And uh, he can, of course, put his arms up in a uh, in a slingshot kind of position which is very very important so people that remember Transformers the movie from 1986 will remember that Grimlock and Wheelie became friends on planet Quintessa and uh, then Wheelie continued to annoy audiences for the rest of the Transformers TV career. Uh, that being said, this, this version of Wheelie does look very, very movie accurate, whereas the toy that was made based on this likeness is really not so much. Uh, yeah, this is the 1986 Wheelie toy that, oh, that's bad. Bad, bad, bad. Uh, not really a great character. He always spoke in rhymes, which even when I was a kid seemed more annoying than anything else. And uh, then you get this toy and, ooh, you know, it's <laughs> just not, not very good. So uh, he can, 
he doesn't have to hold his little slingshot, but, uh, but he has his slingshot. And uh, that is that is the wheelie toy. We'll show the wheelie toy again when we show Grimlock in dino mode. But let's get to Grimlock, because honestly, I feel like that's what most fans are interested in. And right now, as I said, there's a lot of these available. It seems like... Uh, like this wave has been shoving a lot of Grimlocks onto store shelves. So if, uh, if you see, see this in this video and you think, hey, you know what, that looks pretty good, then, uh, then he's pretty easy to come by. He has a translucent plate on the chest and there is an Autobot sign, but the plastic is so dark that it's very, very hard to see. Uh, I feel like a little bit of a lighter translucent. Uh, I like the smoked, but boy, that is really, really dark. We have this gold, which is just a molded plastic. It's not painted. It looks okay. It's not great, but it doesn't look bad. Uh, the rest of him has a lot of gray and black. There is some paint detail here on the legs, which, uh, which doesn't look bad. And then we have some paint detail on the back here with the panels that make up the dinosaur body. So he is not lacking in detail, but, uh, but there's not a lot of it. Uh, most of the different colors are achieved through different molded plastic. We, uh, we see painted eye visors. Uh, there's no light piping here. So you look at the head and there is, uh, there's, it, it kind of falls in shadow, which is fine. It doesn't look bad, but, uh, but it certainly doesn't pop the way that some other figures with the light piping in the heads do. We can get the expected amount of articulation out of this toy. Actually, very good articulation. He's got nice, clicky shoulder joints that come out and also raise and lower. He's got pivots at the bicep. He's got a double joint due to his transform. Uh, this is the elbow, and then there's also this for his dino mode, which, uh, which gives him a little bit of added flexibility. Not a lot, though, because they kind of go in different directions. And then he's got a swivel at the wrist. His, uh, his dino claws also are on pivots, but uh, it's really unnecessary considering that when he's in dino mode, the, uh, the feet tend to be out like this. But uh, I, I don't mind them being there. It, it certainly doesn't hurt anything. He has a swivel as, at the waist. He also has hip joints that go out and also raise and lower. He's got a swivel at the thigh. He's got an articulated knee. And then he's got an ankle joint as well. So very, very poseable figure. You can get him into all sorts of nice dynamic, I'm going to go beat you up kind of poses. And, uh, and that's important for Grimlock because... Uh, you want him to look like he is about to munch metal. Of course, Grimlock would not be Grimlock without his dino mode, as we learned from the Action Master version. So let's go ahead and transform him. So to start, I'm going to flip in the fists, just like that. And I'm also going to straighten out the legs here, and that will help. Straighten out that. And now we can straighten out the arms. And so we have the chest that is on this double hinge right here. So that can come down like this. And we can just fold the head in. And then we have the legs back here. The feet, the heel of the feet are going to fold over like this. A very unusual transform. There have been a lot of Grimlocks over the years, and this one transforms a bit differently, especially with the legs. So we open up these panels on the backs of the legs like this, and then you have the tail, which is on this double hinge here, and it's gonna come out here like that, and we're gonna do the same thing on that side. 
There we go. And now we can fold the legs around like that. And then we close the door. So folding around and closing that up just like that. And now we can put those halves together. It makes for a, a pretty bulbous tail end, but, uh, but it's better than the back end on Combiner Wars Grimlock. So that's a plus. At this point, we can bring the dino head around. We can lock this lower half into the tail here. And I would have expected this to kind of fit better. Uh, it, it doesn't. It fits like this. And uh, it's just kind of an odd choice. It works. It's fine. But it is unusual. And then we've got the dino body, which uh, there's actually two, a pivot as well as a hinge here. So you can swing these up. Make sure that the dino arm is out of the way. And then around to the front. And now we just click his head into place and we can open the mouth because that's important with Grimlock. And this is where that extra joint in the arm gives his dinosaur legs some much needed articulation. And then if you so choose, you can even take the gun here. It has these two little tabs and they peg into these little slots on the bottom of what used to be the feet. So they will just fit in just like that. And now Grimlock is in dino mode. So, um, his dino mode looks great. No, no question that he looks great in his dino mode. Uh, the back end is a little bit bulbous, but uh, like I said, it doesn't hurt it. Uh, it. It is a vast improvement over Combiner Wars Grimlock, who had kind of the box butt. Uh, there was also the video game Grimlock, which had a very boxy tail end. So it's nice to see it taper, even if it is kind of big. The, uh, the arm articulation is okay. It's not great. The fact that the arms come down off of this ball joint really limits the movement. It seems like if they had come out or even come down at an angle, you'd have a lot more room to move it. But because of the way that this was molded, uh, you, you're pretty much keeping these down by the side, which is an odd choice to me, considering that the original toy had the arms in a permanently sticking out position. Uh, I, I feel like they could have split the difference a little bit. Uh, we don't have any articulation in the forward claws. Not that you really need it. Uh, Grimlock doesn't tend to do a whole lot with his claws anyway, but I kind of wish I could get them up into more of a rawr kind of pose rather than a whoopee kind of pose. So, uh, so we've got that. The head does pivot up and down, so you can have him in his more classic 80s tail dragging mode or the uh, more modern T-Rex position of tail in the air. And of course, we have Wheelie who has these little slots in the insides of his legs here and here, and they allow him to, to sit on Grimlock's neck with his legs around. And so we just put that right in there like that and get this one over here like oh like I said the articulation on wheelie is a little bit limited let's try this again let's try it this way okay we'll we'll do that there there we go we, we almost got it 
there. There he is. There he is. And so once again, uh, he is in a position where he can shoot people with his little slingshot. And that's really what, what this action figure is made to do. Uh, not high on the action, uh, but he can, he can, you know, point his little slingshot and be like, Hey, Sharkticon! Pow, pow! And so there you go. So looking at this toy, uh, the detail on it is very nice. I like the molded in detail. The, the paint deco is, is kind of minimal. There, there's not a whole lot of extra detail painted on. I don't know how much it really needs, so it's not a huge detriment, but it is notable that, uh, that they really kind of took a minimalist approach there. Uh, I guess it's kind of a hybrid of trying to capture the cartoon likeness while putting in some extra detail and some texture that the real world offers that you just don't get in a cartoon. Having the wheelie figure is nice uh, to be able to recreate those scenes from the original movie. And so I don't regret having the wheelie figure, but I have to say once again that, that a couple of extra joints would, would have gone a long way into making this something that right now is really just kind of a prop and turning it into a, uh, an actual usable figure. Uh, this, you know, you're not going to be able to really integrate this very easily into any other scene other than having him sit on Grimlock and uh, come up with bad labored rhymes. So that is Studio Series Grimlock, and uh, he's a nice toy. He is a very nice toy, and he has... Uh, he has some, some great aspects to him. The mold detail is very nice. The dinosaur is very playable. The, uh, the robot mode is tremendously playworthy. Uh, I'm, I'm not really a fan of just sticking the gun sideways on his back. I like that they have created a place for weapon storage, but why not have the ability for this thing here, let me get, pull it off here. If if they had a five millimeter post in the top, then you could have maybe had it aiming forward into an attack position. He does have some five millimeter posts on the back of the tail, so you could do something like that, which um, you know that's not really all that useful. You can't quite do this. You can peg it in to the leg so he can also do that to get uh, more of an attack position so that's not so bad but uh, but it does kind of stick out there's another five millimeter port uh, down here and these can also be used in the robot mode to have weapons on the shoulders or on the forearms and uh, and what would be the robot legs I'm sure that that's actually why those ports were port were put there so he looks good. Is he a replacement for the Masterpiece Grimlock? I, I don't think so. They're very similar in size and they have a similar aesthetic, but the Masterpiece Grimlock is a masterpiece. Uh, it is a beautiful toy in every aspect and uh, where there are some obvious places where in this one they cut some costs. Uh, the masterpiece version really uh, doesn't hold anything back. So, uh, so if you're thinking, oh, you know, I, uh, I don't, uh, I, I don't need, yeah, you know, I, I don't want the masterpiece version because I've already got this one. Now you probably want the masterpiece version, but it's also like all the money in the world. So maybe you don't. Uh, that being said, if you missed out on the Masterpiece version and you just want a really good, solid, Gen 1 Grimlock toy that 
that doesn't really try to do anything more than what it's supposed to do. It doesn't combine, it doesn't work in a lot of other gimmicks, it's just a really good adaptation of the character from the cartoon series into the three-dimensional world. This one is great. And the price point in it is really not bad. I, I want to say that uh, it's around $30, which, uh, which these days is pretty much par for the course. So, uh, so decent value. Uh, he's big. He is well articulated. And most importantly, he turns into a robot dinosaur. Uh, what else could you want? So... Uh, that is my unboxing and review for Studio Series Grimlock and Wheelie. Not bad. Room for improvement, but really, uh, I, I would say overall, still uh, a you want it. Especially if you're a Gen 1 fan, if you're a fan of the uh, 1986 Transformers the movie, then you, you probably want this. And the good news is that right now he's very easy to come by. If you like this video, then please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell. We do live streams every Friday night at 8 o'clock Eastern. Right now it's daylight time, of course, uh, over the winter. It's standard time in America, and uh, Google can tell you if you are in another country what time that is. But 8 o'clock Eastern daylight or standard time US and uh, we also do these short circuit videos throughout the week uh, please if uh, if you enjoy these kinds of videos uh, give it a thumbs up that helps us out a lot and other than that uh, you know Grimlock studio series Grimlock uh, he, he's he's actually pretty awesome so, this is Clay Carlino telling you to keep it retro, bot. That's right, retro bot, because that's the name of the channel, and we, we like bots that are retro, and so it's retro bot. It's really all the connection that we get.